So class 196 on the Golden Doves, I think I'm on the right number there. Page 117, I just want to read again the Rabi al-Azab. Um, right, indeed, a Zohar, the Zohar, a work which tradition associates with the Bishop of Yahai, and which modern scholars attribute to Moses de Leon, declared in the name of Rabi al-Azab. My silence built a sanctuary above and a sanctuary below. Meaning, to allow for the presence of God, one has to be silent. You have to have the blank space. So without the blank space, you can't have the Beta Mikdash. Right? If you're going to impose your thoughts upon those in positions, upon those thoughts, you can never have a Beta Mikdash. The Beta Mikdash needs a silence. Okay, that, I just wanted to explain that uh, point. Uh, now we're going to be again, page 117. As mentioned earlier, successive analysis is generally connected with the ear and hearing process. Remember, we spoke about successive synthesis. Vital, the foremost Lurianic mystic, declared that the ear is the mystery of intelligence, Bina, right? So the Yesod of Bina is from hearing. And it is a mystery of the soul, Neshama. This is in Ais Hayim. Okay. The soul is made out of the ether in the ear. It's interesting. So it's like there's a blank space in the ear. And the blank space is where the Neshama is made from. Interesting concept. Okay. The human mind, this is continuing discussing uh, as Hayim, even with the help of metaphor, can only reach up to the ear, but not beyond it. Because the Sodot of the Torah, we, we and the Nabim, we use metaphor, Mishalim, to understand, to get closer to understanding. But it can never go past the successive synthesis. It is no coincidence that the oraculum is depicted as doves, right? First, the Hebrew Torah, doves, is phonetically close to Torah. It's interesting. So Torah Zahav is a word that, at least pronunciation-wise, Torah, Torah, right? So the mashal of using Torah. So the word Torah insinuates the word Torah. But most importantly, the doves indicate the volatile character of successive experience, right? Because the doves are very volatile, right? You don't know which way it's going to go, when it's going to fly, when it's going to jump, when it's, right? The second dove, identical to the first, but not actually the first, is grasped by the second person, initially in terms of the silver dots, and then as a golden dove. It's interesting. If you look at the cover, it has two doves. This is part of, I think, the golden dove on the bottom. But I think the idea of the second dove is, so you have the oraculum, which is God's speech, as God understands it. And then the second person processes that speech by connecting letters. So that's the silver dots. But then, in, then the second person gets an understanding and that understanding is now a second set of golden doves. So there's a transformation from silver dots in the mind of the second person to golden doves in the mind of the second person. Similarly, the rabbis taught that at the beginning the Torah is called in the name of the Lord, but at the end it will be called in His, the student's name, right? Because then the student processes the golden doves. That is, the student will eventually view the Torah from the perspective of the first person. That's beautiful. Right. All right. The two doves are the two poles essential to every linguistic experience. Anytime you have a conversation, you can have two golden doves. I can only be said to a you, right? So that I implies a first person and the first person can only speak to a second person who, who posits himself as the second person. Similarly, 
the written law is the original oraculum as perceived ad intra within God's, you know, as God perceives these words as ad intra. But initially, the Israelites received it as the oral law, right? Because God, Moshe Rabbeinu, speaks the Torah to the Jewish people and teaches them the Torah, the Al Peh. Only after 40 years of wandering before entering into the promised land and Moses delivered to them the written law. So there's a transformation. So speaking to them, the Torah, the silver dots, during the 40 years, eventually this transforms into, into the golden doves, which is the Sifra Torah that Moshe Rabbeinu wrote. From the perspective of the people, the oral law antecedes the written law. It comes before everybody thinks, oh, you first have a Torah Shemichtav, then Torah Shemichtav, that's incorrect. Haki have a Torah Shemichtav, uh, describing what happened later on in the book. Right? So you have the oral law, the Torah Shabbat, and then you have the written law. Therefore, as Eliyahu ben Amuzeg indicated, the written law must always function as a mnemonic sign for the oral law. Very interesting. And then when you read the Pesukim, oh, that's Tefillin, yes. It seems that the inspiration of the Golden Doves came to Solomon from his father, King David. Uh-huh. Because Shira Shim was written, of course, by Shilamu HaMelech. Shira Shirim HaShel Yishlomo, Torez HaVna Selach. So King David, I'm sorry, in a psalm traditionally associated with the Theophany at Sinai, the people are compared to the wings of a dove inlaid with silver. And are feathers with yellow gold. So you see the metaphor is an interesting metaphor that David HaMelech uses. The silver-gold combination probably implies a technique similar to that used for the manufacturing of the golden doves and the golden apples. Because we said that gold and silver can't technically be welded together. So you can put one over the other, but you can't weld them. In the solution of these riddles, too, lies the significance of a dove with silver wings and feathers of yellow gold. So you have a dove with silver wings. The Evrotea Bira So you have the you have the so again, you have the the riddle is of course how do you got the silver together with the gold, and the relationship between the silver and the gold. In the solution of these riddles too, lies the significance of a dove with silver wings and feathers of yellow gold. Interesting. So the wings are silver and the feathers which are closer to the body are gold. So it's kind of like so you have the wings because the wings they cover the body. So the body is gold but the wings are um, are silver. Interesting. A similar type of similar idea or the very interesting. So this David Amelech thought of a golden dove with silver wings and the silver cover covers the body, but the feathers are already gold. <laughs>